This is a pretty surprising trade from the Boston Red Sox. Now they got to make it make sense. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and the Boston Red Sox have officially made their second trade of the 2024 MLB deadline. And this one is a really interesting deal. So what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to break this trade down. We're going to talk about who's coming in, who's going out, and obviously how this is going to impact the 2024 Boston Red Sox. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so for those of you who may have missed this trade already and haven't seen the news yet, Jeff Passan announced that the Boston Red Sox will be acquiring catcher Danny Jansen from the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, the very first thing right off the bat here is that this is another interdivision trade for Craig Breslow. And I understand that that's sort of become a thing of the past a little bit to avoid trading within division, mostly because of the new playoff structure as well as the new schedule. But at the same time, too, it kind of shows that Craig Breslow has really no fear when it comes to who he's going to be trading with but in this trade specifically looking at Danny Jansen what he's done at the plate so far this year it hasn't exactly been super exciting he currently has just a 212 average with a 303 on base percentage and a 369 slug which is good for a 90 OPS plus about 10% below league average production Again, like I said, certainly not anything to get super excited about here, but there may be some things to at least get interested in with what Danny Jansen could be with the Boston Red Sox because he has had legitimate success at the major league level in the batter's box. Between the last three years, 2021 to 2023, he has been an above average player in major league baseball. And over that time span in total, he had a 237 average with a 317 on base percentage and a 487 slug, which was good for a 120 OPS plus about 20% better than the average hitter in Major League Baseball. He also had 43 home runs, which is an average of a little under 15 home runs a season, 38 doubles, and 125 RBIs all in those three years. Basically, what I'm saying here with Danny Jansen is that there is some potential here with who he could be at the plate for the Boston Red Sox. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it's not a long-term deal. Danny Jansen is under arbitration, but this is his last year of arbitration so he is going to be a free agent at the end of the 2024 season this isn't someone the Red Sox are planning on incorporating into their long-term plans this is someone that they think could help this team right now now going back to his 2024 statistics again on paper it doesn't look fantastic but taking a look at his baseball savant page there are actually some really encouraging things here that could lend a hand as to why the Red Sox may have gone after him if you take a look at it right now he's not chasing a ton of pitches he isn't swinging and missing a ton or striking out a lot and he's walking a ton could be a really interesting right-handed bat to mix into a very left-handed heavy lineup defensively he is a brick wall back there he is in the 98th percentile and blocks above average not great in terms of metrics outside of that but he could end up being a really solid defensive player for this Red Sox team especially because the Red Sox have had some issues this season with with pass balls, Danny Jansen could be a legitimate upgrade for that. But to me, what makes this trade really surprising is because it doesn't feel like this is the Red Sox targeting one of the things that they said specifically they were looking for at this year's deadline. It's not a pitcher, and it's not really a right-handed power bat that's going to be really effective against lefties. In fact, it's kind of the exact opposite. If you take a look at his split so far throughout his career, he's actually better against right-handed pitchers pitchers than he is left-handed pitchers. He currently has a 91 OPS plus against lefties and a 104 OPS plus against righties. To me, this trade kind of feels like the Red Sox simply taking advantage of a situation where they saw a team that was going to be selling at this year's deadline and realized it was an opportunity to really improve one of the areas on their team. Not a true significant improvement, but come out of the deadline looking marginally better. Because if you take a 
look at Reese McGuire so far this season, his baseball savant page is ice cold. It is dead blue. There is one category that he really excels in, and that is pitch framing, which is going to be really interesting to me because, one, Reese McGuire is Brian Bayo's everyday catcher. That's the guy who catches him every single game. I'm curious to see what kind of dynamic that looks like, and that's the biggest part of this for me. Where do the Red Sox fit Danny Jansen onto this roster? The obvious answer is you get rid of Reese McGuire. Now, does that mean you find another trade to trade Reese McGuire away from this team? Does that mean you just bite the bullet and DFA him? How is that going to work? And that's definitely going to be something to be paying attention to over the next couple of days. They're obviously going to have to add him at the deadline this season. Look, I think overall, in terms of what the Red Sox are getting back, it's nothing super exciting. It's not something that's going to be, okay, the Red Sox needed pitching and right-handed hitting, truly right-handed hitting that was going to knock the crap out of lefties while also not striking out a lot. He doesn't really hit the mark on either of those, but what he does do is give you a really athletic catching option behind Connor Wong, a guy who can come in there, give you some really solid defense, and on top of that, we talk about it all the time. What's the biggest problem with the Boston Red Sox offense right now? They can't hit lefties, and they strike out a ton. Danny Jansen, while he hits righties better, isn't too terrible against lefties, and he really doesn't strike out all that much. I think his strikeout rate is going to be a really integral part of how the Red Sox evaluated this trade. But obviously, there are two parts to all of this, so let's also break down who the Red Sox decided to give up for Danny Jansen and what that may mean for the future of this team. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Thank you all very much for taking a second and doing so. Let's go over who the Red Sox have given up. What makes this trade really surprising though is actually not who the Red Sox got, it's who the Red Sox gave up because on the surface, it feels like a bit of an overpay. The Red Sox sent over three different prospects to the Toronto Blue Jays in order to get Danny Jansen onto the Boston Red Sox. The, num the highest ranked one being Edinson Paulino, who is currently the number 15th overall prospect in the Red Sox system. This season, he is hitting 263 with a 349 on base percentage and a 391 slug, good for a 112 WRC plus, about 12% above league average production in AA. The other person that the Red Sox gave up is a guy by the name of Cutter Kofi, who is actually the 26th ranked overall prospect in the Red Sox system. Like Edinson Paulino, he was having a really solid year. He had a 238 average with a 321 on base percentage and a bit higher than what we've seen so far from him in minor league baseball. 463 slug, good for a 118 WRC plus, about 18% above league average production. They also gave up a pitcher as well. I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, but he is a lower level uh, pitcher in the Red Sox system, not someone that's really the focus of this trade. In fact, the focus of this trade is that the Red Sox may have overpaid a bit, right? You look at who J Danny Jansen is, who we just broke down, and it really doesn't feel like he is worth giving up two t almost top 25 prospects in the Red Sox system, but there's a couple of things that we need to take note of. The first is that Edinson Paulino is going to be Rule 5 eligible at the end of this season. I don't think, and I don't think any of you guys really think that Edinson Paulino is ready to make an impact at the big league level or really take up a 40-man roster spot coming into 2025, especially with all the prospects that we believe and that the Red Sox most likely believe are going to be ready come the 2025 season. That makes him a bit more expendable despite the fact that he is a higher ranked prospect. Cutter Kofi is a guy who has a ton of potential, right? There's a reason he is close to the top 25 in Red Sox prospect rankings. It's because he could be a very legitimate big league player, but at the same time too, it's like we talked about before. The Red Sox need to start dealing from an area of depth. Right now, surrounding Cutter 
Kofi. Basically, every other level in the minor leagues are guys who are ranked above him in his current position, which is shortstop or third base. You've got Marcelo Meyer, Nick York, Yoelin Cespedes, Franklin Arias. You've got at the big league level, Trevor Story, David Hamilton, say Don Raffaello, right? They needed to find a place to find a way to make a trade and in the middle infield makes the most sense despite the fact that these are some of your higher ranked guys. In my opinion, it is a bit shocking. It is a bit of an overpay. Actually, it's not even a bit. It is flat out an overpay for Danny Jansen. But at the same time too, if the Red Sox believe that Danny Jansen can help them reach the playoffs, I think it's absolutely worth it. Danny Jansen to us may not be the most exciting name in the entire world. In fact, it's not the most exciting name in the entire world. But again, the Red Sox goal this season and buying at the MLB deadline is to make a playoff spot, not figure out what you're going to do with Cutter Kofi and Edison Paulino. And plus, we talked about this a multitude of times before the MLB te- deadline really started to heat up. And that is the fact that this is a seller's market. There are much more teams buying as opposed to selling. You're going to have to overpay to get what you want. So in a realistic world, would I have liked to have seen a package of Edinson Paulino and Cutter Kofi get something a bit more impactful for the Boston Red Sox? Absolutely. But if this is what it realistically took and the Red Sox realistically believe that Danny Jansen will be able to make a difference on the 2024 club as they fight for a playoff spot, I'm okay with it. I don't know about you guys, but I am okay with that deal. So overall, taking a look at everything, I got to say, do I hate it? No. Do I love it? Absolutely not. Do I hope that it ends up being a positive for this Red Sox team? Of course, right? Every move the Red Sox make, you're going to want to hope that it is a positive move for the Boston Red Sox. But the one thing I'm taking away from this is that the Red Sox are putting kind of their chips on the table here, right? They haven't made that gigantic move yet but they've been able to marginally improve themselves by taking risks. And I like that motive. And I hope that there's more to see from this. I think a lot of people are going to sit there and they are going to say this was a terrible idea or this was a waste of a trade. But at the same time too, I understand that this isn't the guy that you wanted. This isn't the starting pitcher, high impact guy that we wanted. This isn't the right-handed power bat that's going to be a mainstay in the center of this Red Sox lineup for the rest of the way. But it's a marginal improvement in Honestly, it's not even really marginal. Taking a look at Reese McGuire compared to Danny Jansen, Danny Jansen beats him in almost every measurable category like we showed in the first part of this video. So I think overall, it's a win for the major league club. Is it a win for the organization? Well, that's something we're going to have to wait and see on. But for the big league club, I think this trade is a win and that's what the Red Sox need to do. If they think something's a win, they need to do it and not even think about it again. And I think that's what happened here in this trade. So is this trade a surprise? trade something that we didn't see coming absolutely is it that does that mean it's a bad trade no I don't think it's a bad trade at all but that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think what do you think about the latest Red Sox trade do you like it do you not like it what do you think of the prospects that they sent back do you think would you have made this trade and do you think Danny Jansen's a big enough impact player for those prospects let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox trade in the comment section down below as always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you hopefully with some more higher impact trades. And of course, in the red seats.